Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. Today we go down under to Australia, where we walk through one of the most important fiber initiatives that is setting the standard for digital infrastructure globally. Bevan Slattery, an Australian technology entrepreneur, this week announced what is being called Hyper One, which is Australia's first hyperscale national fiber network and the largest private digital infrastructure project in Australia's history. Indeed, Hyper One has the aim to revolutionize digital infrastructure in Australia. Specifically, the project will construct a more than 12,500 mile or over 20,000 kilometer hyperscale national fiber network at a cost of 1.5 billion Australian dollars or 1.2 billion US dollars. Additionally, Hyper One will create more than 10,000 new jobs during construction for Australians. So what will Hyper One connect? Hyper One will support industries such as cloud computing, data centers, environmental sciences, agriculture technology, space vehicle launch, aerospace, satellite, defense, and cybersecurity. Additionally, Hyper One will provide transmission to local distribution networks such as the National Broadband Network, which is Australia's state-owned national wholesale open access broadband network and also distribution to wireless carriers like Telstra. So where will Hyper One connect in Australia? Hyper One will be the first true private and national backbone fiber optic transmission network across Australia. Specifically, the project will connect major data center hubs in every capital city, state, and territory across Australia. Therefore, Hyper One's network will deliver a major boost in data transmission capacity into many cities and towns across Australia. These cities include Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane in the east of the country, which will connect through Hyper One to cities including Perth in the west, Adelaide in the south, and Darwin in the north. Specifically, Hyper One will make Darwin in the north the key point of digital interconnection between Southeast Asia, which is the fastest growing digital market on Earth, and Australia's east coast. Indeed, Darwin will be the digital entrance for the rest of Asia into Australia. So how will Hyper One improve Australia's domestic connectivity? Hyper One will be a new generation of hyperscale networks. It will be capable of carrying over 10,000 terabits per second of data traffic. Indeed, this network capacity allows Hyper One to handle more traffic than every other national backbone built in Australia's history combined. The current networks, which often use technologies like copper, have served Australia well for the past 20 years. However, these networks are nearing the end of their useful life and they were designed for a different time. All the existing national transmission networks were built before there was YouTube, Netflix, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and cloud computing, let alone any future industries that increase data usage further. Additionally, Hyper One will address what's known as the digital divide, an issue affecting rural and remote areas globally, including Australia. Because of this, the project is adding more than 1,000 on-ramps in regional and remote areas of Australia. These on-ramps enable underserved communities and remote areas to have a cost-effective way of accessing Hyper One. Put simply, an on-ramp is where a data center tenant like Hyper One leases a small-sized area of less than 20 cabinets within a multi-tenant data center to establish a point of presence known as a POP, and these can also be known as on-ramps. In turn, these on-ramps make it very easy and seamless for other tenants within that data center facility to directly connect into Hyper One, which drastically reduces connectivity bottlenecks. So how will Hyper One improve Australia's international connectivity? Hyper One will also create new major interconnection points for more international subsea cables into Australia from Asia, the United States, and South America. Subsea cables are incredibly important because they carry 99% of all international telecommunications traffic for business, personal, and government purposes. If you head over to this website called submarinecablemap.com, which is a great free resource, you can really begin to understand the global network of subsea cables, which are these physical digital infrastructure connections laying at the bottom of oceans and sea floors. 
Heading over to Australia on the map, I will highlight four key important subsea cables that Hyper One will eventually make interconnection points with. The major subsea cables in Australia include number one, C Mi We 3, which connects Southeast Asia with the Middle East and Western Europe. Number two, Southern Cross Cable Network, also known as SCCN, which connects Australia with the West Coast of the United States. Third, which is the Australia-Singapore cable, known as ASC, which connects Australia with Indonesia and Singapore. And fourth is Australia-Japan cable, known as AJC, which, as the name implies, connects Australia with Japan. Once international traffic reaches Australia through these subsea cables, it will then travel over Hyper One's terrestrial fibre network to reach its ultimate destination at the user's home, office, or mobile phone. Finally, we also wanted to mention that it has been quite a busy week for digital infrastructure in Australia, even going beyond Hyper One, which tells us how important digital infrastructure is becoming on a global scale. Firstly, on February 8th, Vocus Group, an owner of Fiber, Subsea Cables and Data Centers, announced that it had accepted a proposal from Macquarie Infrastructure and Real Assets, also known as Mira, to acquire Vocus for a price of $5.50 per share, equivalent to 3.4 billion Australian dollars and 2.6 billion US dollars. Vocus Group owns a terrestrial fiber network comprising 18,600 route miles. Additionally, the company owns the Australia-Singapore cable, known as ASC, which we mentioned previously. If you want to learn more about this unique transaction by Macquarie Infrastructure, then visit us at dgtlinfra.com to check out the article Vocus Group Accepts Macquarie's $3.4 billion Australian dollar take private proposal. We will link to it below as well. Secondly, on February 11th, Telstra, Australia's largest wireless carrier, announced its timeline to monetize its InfraCo Towers division, which comprises 5,600 cellular towers across Australia, at a valuation exceeding 4 billion Australian dollars or 3 billion US dollars. Specifically, 4,400 or 79% of these towers are located in major Australian cities and 1,200, or 21%, are situated in more remote areas of Australia. If you want to learn more about this value-creating towers transaction by Telstra, then visit us at dgtlinfra.com to check out the article Telstra to monetize 5,600 InfraCo towers at a more than 4 billion Australian dollar valuation. We will link to it below as well. With that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.